Hello everyone, my name is Nathan and today it's time for another episode of Factorio. In the previous episode, we left off by finishing the electronic circuit contraption and today it's time to start with the other circuits. I already mentioned in the previous episode we cannot have the circuits next to each other because if we require a material that is required in the next section, then the train is not gonna have easy access. I looked around the materials what we could have in between, one of the things we are gonna require are pipes, so I figured that might be the better option than low density structures. The pipes are mostly gonna be required in order to build the engine unit, so that could be the thing we have in between the other circuits. So next thing would be the pipes, then advanced circuits, then the engine units, and then the processing units, and finally the electric engine units. And that is exactly the goal for today's episode. Let's get started with the pipes. I already measured this out, two machines with all speed modules and speed beacons in order to get an entire belt of pipes. It's gonna require some iron plates, so my suggestion is we can copy over something that actually has four stations. We need four stations like so. Yeah, this is probably a good one to copy over. Gonna go ahead and set this up right here. We're gonna make our way over there. Oh, actually I'm already nearby again. Robots are gonna build that stuff. In the meantime, let's build some train stops. Can I also... Yeah, I need more cliff explosives. Gonna copy over one of the arm plate stations and we can set this up right there. Right, with the way back already set up, I think we can let the trains in come, which should happen immediately. Yeah, we can see this actually turned purple here, which means a train is arriving. We just finished stronger explosives. Now we actually get into the really expensive research. Well, I guess we could still do this one, refined flammables. Let's start that. This time around, I don't want two lines, so let's actually cut this off. So instead of getting two lines, I only would like to see one. So this contraption is going to be fairly easy. It's just going to be four stations filled with iron. So we have four lines. We can do something similar as with the electronic circuits. Let's copy this over until, yeah, there it fits. The station is going to be for pipes. Here we can load pipes. We also should have the space for two trains. Wonderful. I'm already going to bring this up a little bit further. And then, of course, we also need a way back down, which is going to happen right here. Let's think about the setup now. We only really need one machine as we've established, right? No, hold on. We need two machines. Okay, so we want to copy this. We want to build some pipes and inside the machines, we also need speed modules. We are then going to have our input belt of iron in the center and pick the materials up like so. Actually, I might need more space for inserters. So instead, I think what I'm gonna do is something like that and we'll have two inserters, one on either side inputting materials. Come on, you go there. We then power up the modules like so and we'll also have some lighting. Where are my lights? We then export the pipes like so and we should be able to bring those towards the center. Let me see. Yeah, just like that. And we go ahead, combine them here in the center. Let this guy hop over as well. And then we can do the same thing with the second module. This guy is going to come in. Yeah, we need to place the light somewhere else. Let's do them here maybe. Get this underground belt one for the back and then we should be able to easily combine that. Already used up my belts again. Jeez, I think I need to store more belts. They are just used up so quickly. So instead of storing 500 at a time, I would like to see a thousand in my inventory. Thank you very much. But yeah, essentially that's gonna be it. We have two inputs and one output. We can go ahead, take this, paste it in approximately here. Sure, looks good. Actually, I'm gonna get rid of the beacons again. Then we copy this over a couple more times and everything should line up again because it's the same size. All of these inputs, absolutely wonderful. The only thing we're missing now are the inputs for our iron ore. Let's see, uh, this one would probably go over, this one would go over there, a little bit more up, and you want to go here. Okay, that's good. And then I just leave one space free. Oh yes, I think that's going to add up nicely, giving me more than enough space. We go in like so and so, and then maybe have this guy over there. You know, I have a better idea on how this might look better. If we have all the splitters next to each other, then we can have a whole bunch of lines going up. I like that idea. 
There we go. This is gonna look much better. As a matter of fact, I'm gonna take these guys and build them already at the bottom here. Okay then, let's go ahead, grab some more materials. Do I have solar panels? Yeah, I'm gonna make a little stop here. You can see, I'm just going on with the solar panels. There's gonna be no end to this until we have hundreds of thousands, if not millions of them. Alright, set and done, and we are ready for the next step. Let's actually just go ahead and hook this up for now and see the iron flow. It's gonna be lovely, beautiful, exceptional. Oh yes, gotta love it. I'm really looking forward as to when this space is fully functional. For the red circuits, this is gonna be a different story. We need double the amount of copper cables than plastic bars and electronic circuits. If we check this out here and we want to produce an entire belt of advanced circuits, we're gonna need an awful lot of input materials, but if we have a train station with two outputs per station, we should be able to do it and then we can also fit three machines next to each other. So the first thing we want to do is copy over a station with two output belts per station, which is gonna be this one. Gonna paste that in right here, make sure no train arrives just yet. I wanna make sure that one of our input is something new, namely the electronic circuit that we've built. And we also wanna check for that in the condition. So now we also programmed that in. And then we're also gonna need some plastic, which I believe I haven't done yet either. So unload plastic bars and filter plastic bars. And then the last two stations are gonna be copper cable stations, which we already have. So I can just copy this over for those two stations. There we go. The railway system has been built. So I'm gonna start filling this up already. Now we do not currently own a circuit or plastic train. So this might be a good opportunity to introduce them. I'm gonna build two circuit trains first and you know the drill. So I'm not gonna let you know about everything except it is gonna be something different. But as long as I'm doing the same thing, you already know how I'm programming these trains. So you can go and same thing with you. Goodbye. We also want one for plastic, right? So just give me a brief moment to also accomplish this. Once we have those materials inbound, we need to think about how we want to accomplish this. We want to divide this by three, so we get approximately eight machines per row. This time the rows are gonna be upwards, so this is gonna be our first machine daisy chained towards this guy. If we divide everything else by three, we already know. We could, for instance, combine the plastic bars and electronic circuits, and then divide it by three, one line of copper is gonna do. So let's say I'm coming in from this side for the copper cable and then the other side is going to be the combined materials. We get everything in using stack inserters and with fast inserters we can probably get the circuits out of there. And since we only occupy a third or so of the output belt, we are not at risk of filling it up. So that is actually pretty straightforward and we should be able to daisy chain eight of them easily. Oh, I totally forgot about the power. You should never forget about the power, man. And we're not gonna forget about lighting either. But after that, we can copy it over. So we wanna copy the entire thing and copy it over twice, like so. Now we have three times eight rows. Now I only need to know where the railway is and we probably know how far we can push this over. We're gonna need a little bit of wiggle room here at the bottom. Let's maybe copy over a station. Gonna paste that in here and another research done. How wonderful is that? Let's maybe do some artillery stuff. Might be fun to experiment around with that. We end up with the materials on the top. So for this one, I'm gonna go with a classical balancer right there. And that means we can now guesstimate where approximately we want this. Maybe here is going to be centered and we leave just a little bit of wiggle room at the bottom. And I guess right here we can already have our rail outbound. Actually no, the beacon is going to be in the way. So let me figure it out here. How close can I build this? Come on. Yeah, there we go. That's going to be it. So then the last course of action is going to be to export these materials and bring them over to my balancer. One moment, I think I need a little bit more space. That's gonna be better, so I can import these guys easily. Now we have the big problem of combining plastics and electronic circuits. We have two belts each and we need three output belts. I wonder, could I, for instance, divide this up into three lines? Oh, actually that might work. Let's say we combine one belt here 
And actually, that might be... Yeah, look at that. That is just enough space to hop over once. And that means we can do the same thing here with the second belt. We already have two outputs. And now we're going to make a third one here, probably. Yeah. And then hop over there. And we have three outputs combined materials. Obviously, there's a fourth slot we're not really using. And this might throw some items off. But since we have a balancer here, once the items are full on either belt, the other one should be supplied. So I think I'm gonna try it this way. So now we only need to bring this to the right inputs. Let's say the right side of the assemblers is gonna be for our plastic and electronic circuits. Uh, actually, that makes no sense. It's gonna be the left side. Yeah, it's gonna be better. And then all we need to do is something like this. Let me see. Is this even possible? What if we just share some lines? So those guys come over. They're gonna combine right there and actually go back into the first splitter here to distribute more materials. Now we take this guy coming in here. Actually, let me do it on the top there. You would be coming up and then you can join this guy. Mm -hmm. And last but not least, a splitter here. And we want to do the same thing. We hop over here, join this guy. Okay, now we have everything distributed. All I need is some materials to actually build this. I'm going to be right back. Okay, wonderful. That contraption is finished as well. We'll have to see how it runs at the moment. The copper cables haven't arrived just yet. No surprise there really, but we can already check if the mixing of these materials is working. And we're getting some nice belts. Yeah, actually that looks nicely distributed. That is probably as long as we have full input belts, we should be golden. And now materials are being brought into here. Okay, great. Did we change that? Yeah, this is loading electronic circuits. So the next thing we want to do, as mentioned, are the engine units. We're going to need one steel station, one iron gear station and two pipe stations. But all pretty straightforward once again. So we shall copy this over. I'm gonna paste it here. Now we actually get a little bit into a pickle. I'm gonna need to borrow some landfill here. And then hopefully we can at least do the intersection still. Actually we can do way more than that. Intersection, I need you, obviously. And the rest can be built. Let's make sure no train actually comes in here. The first one shouldn't be the circuits anymore, but we want to unload, I probably haven't done that yet, the steel. We also needed iron gear wheels, which I think is also the first time I'm shipping them. And then two rows of pipes. Yeah, we want to ship the pipes here. All right, to get an entire blue belt of engine units, we're going to need 40 assembling machines. Jeez. Yeah, we can do it in a similar fashion by combining the steel and the iron gears. However, we're only going to need two outputs this time around. Or we might even need four. You know, maybe we could do this in a similar way. The problem is 40 is not easily dividable by three. I mean, what we could try out is 13 machines per row. Let's see if that makes sense at all. So that's eight and then we just add five more to get to 13. Yeah, I don't think that's too exaggerated. And that means we can just copy over the system from the previous thing here. And moreover, we can copy over the entire thing, actually. Ah, this is going to be amazing. So we copy over that and then we just need five more. That's four and five. Wonderful. Also, let me go ahead and destroy nature a little bit. Now we have 13 machines in a row. Obviously, the recipe needs to change. This should be engine units. But in the end, it's the same thing. We can just take this as a guide where we need the rails and everything. However, right here in the end, it's going to be the same thing, though we can have the train station a little bit further up. That's uh, probably just going to go here. And this one is going to be load engine units here. Okay, wonderful. This is looking good. Now, the only thing we're missing is a whole bunch of underground belts. But I guess after that, we can go for the processing units. Yeah, this is wonderful. Now, with copying everything over, this is going much quicker than I anticipated. However, what is taking longer and longer is the walk back to my main base. Maybe I should have centralized this more. Eh, of course, I don't mean the main base. I mean the starter base. But yeah, this is still currently where I'm getting my materials from. I intend to get my materials from here in the future. And then maybe we have the space for two nice nuclear reactor setups. So yeah, let me just continue by setting up the first few things necessary for the processing units and then we can see how we can build this. 
Alrighty, it's time to build the setup for the processing units. We already have the incoming materials. Now, there is a slight problem. It is probably unrealistic to fill up an entire belt with one contraption unless we are willing to supply 14 full belts of electronic circuits. So we are gonna cut down on this a little bit and divide this by 4 in order to get something below 4 full belts of electronic circuits. Now, let's see, maybe we can get this even a little bit higher. No, now we're too high, we need to be below 4 belts. 0.275 is the golden number, just below 4 belts, 11 assembling machines, we're actually gonna have 12, just for symmetry's sake. And if we divide this by 4 electronic circuit belts, we get 3 machines per line. So let's go ahead and build the first one, those would be the 3 machines. Now we need to find a way to supply it with sulfuric acid and also I want to reserve both sides for the electronic circuits and the advanced ones. We'll have electronic circuits on the top with a stack inserter and advanced circuits at the bottom with a fast inserter. We can probably go with a plain normal inserter to get things out of there and then if we're lucky yeah we have to go one more but we then can hop over here and to there. So now the only problem is the piping. If we come in from here, then we should be able to do something about it. Yeah, look at that. This is gonna work out niftily. Get one pipe in here. This comes around and there we go. We have everything covered. Gonna go ahead, remove the beacons once again. We then wanna copy this over three more times. And I guess now we can align it wherever we like. And probably here is a good spot. Actually, with this one, the other kind of balancer would be better. Let's go ahead and cut one out. I should have it. Let's see. Yeah, this guy here. You know, we don't really have the space for it. Maybe... Ah, let me just try it. Okay, I'm not really convinced because we don't have a lot of space here to deal with the belts. Well, let's think about this. If we input advanced circuits like this, we would need to do this for each input here. Up over there and split up some more. Uh, wait, that was too early. And split up one last time here. No, actually this doesn't even need to be a split. After that I'm gonna need the space for four input lines. So at least this space. Uh, let me see, maybe we can make some more space here. For instance, this guy doesn't necessarily need to be here. We can also... Let's see, where did it just go? For instance, this guy doesn't need to be here. We can have it there. But that wouldn't really save me any space. It's just overall a little bit more elegant, I would say. Well, really, it's not a problem. We just have to move everything a little bit towards the right. We can do that. Namely, over here. Well, you also have to move. Wonderful. And just like that, we have enough space for all of our electronic circuit lines. Maybe for this one, we can even set up a balancer, would look nice. And all of these electronic circuits will be distributed evenly amongst the four lines. And finally, some advanced circuits will also be incoming. There we go. Just to connect the outputs and we are set. Okay, this contraption is also done. And with that out of the way, we have done a major step all we have to do now really is kickstart the base by making everything a little bit faster. Of course, right now we are suffering from slowness. However, now we should focus on counteracting that by building as many beacons and modules as possible to speed things up. One thing I can already observe that is going to be a problem in the beginning is the copper cables. And I think we need to speed them up by not only doubling up on the amount we have, but also by beaconing this up first. You know, looking at things like this, we will be doing some changes. For instance, I would like to push these guys back a little bit. And also, I really feel like we can put the balancer over here. Let me cut this out, put it over there. Or maybe we can even put it as far as this. Then we can have this go straight up. Yeah, I kind of like that. But yeah, what I meant to say is we will be doing a lot of these refinements in the future just to make things look a little bit niftier. This is the copper cable contraption and we would like to have another one of these. So this is the first time we're actually trying to stack a thing. We are gonna do our best. If I go ahead and just make a copy of everything. Let's see, could we easily accomplish this and just how much space do we want to leave free? 
Oh no, what did I do? I cut things out, I believe. Oh, that is bad. Oh no, I made a horrible mistake. I actually cut things out instead of making a copy. Okay, I think we're all good again. But this time around, I would like to make a copy. Yes. And then we can go as far down as this, to be honest. Wonderful. Time to build the same contraption all over once again. Ah, oh, this is gonna be amazing. And I almost have to make no adjustments. One problem we have to tackle is how to get the train fuel over here. But I think this might be fairly easy if we can just use a red bell to hop over there. So we're just gonna trace our way back down until we find the coal belt, which is actually right here. So all we have to do is split it up, hop over here, and there we go. Problem solved. Now we have a second hop. All the train stations can remain the same. However, we will have to add two more copper cable trains so they properly fill out the stations and we can just copy this guy. I even have the materials for two trains and eight wagons. The first two copper plate trains already arrived. Absolutely wonderful. Uh, we just need to grab some belts. And just like that, we doubled the amount of cables we are producing and we are just going vertically up and we can do this indefinitely, you know? At some point, it probably becomes impractical, but... We also have to beacon things up a little bit. I will be doing that. As a matter of fact, let's do that right now for the lower portion. I have 50 speed modules so we can beacon up at least a couple of them. Let's get started right here. Still 26 so we can do one more at least. Not too shabby except we cannot get the circuits out of there quick enough. Or let me see. Oh, hold on. I totally messed this up with the outputs here. This should go over and like so. Okay, <laughs> much better already. I think I'm gonna have my other speed beacons here on the top for a better distribution. But yeah, it looks like we will have to make some adjustments because, for instance, we cannot get the circuits out of there quick enough with just two inserters. Okay, that's gonna be fairly interesting to adjust and all, but let me go ahead, grab some more materials. I'm gonna be finishing this and then prepare everything for the next episode where we are starting to balance things to make things faster so that we can reach our goal of beaconing everything up. And then it's just gonna go crazy as of this point. But yeah, with that out of the way, I would say we're gonna wrap it up for today's episode. Thank you so much for watching, guys. I really hope you enjoyed it. Have a great time and see you in the next one. Bye-bye.